previously on the Infinite Escape Room. A Grimble bum sandwich. Um, as much as I don't want to interfere with the deceased, I do like a hat. And, and the weird bumpy thing. I don't really want to molest the fast fat controller, to be honest. Bienvenue, Croiso, and welcome to the Infinite Escape Room, the puzzling podcast where a group of geographically diverse pals meet up, have a drink or two, and work together to solve a homemade escape room of the ears. I'm Jamie, aka that one asshole in the escape room who will wear any costume no matter how stupid it looks, and I'm drinking a Goose Island Golden Goose tonight. It's the last one that I have, and it's delicious. Oh, goodbye, Jamie's last Golden Goose. No, Golden Goose? Golden Goose. Goose Island. Yeah, it's, I'm usually a Goose Midway guy, but this was on special by an Aldi and I couldn't say no. Uh, God bless the middle aisle. Indeedy. And locked in with me today, we have... I'm Laura and I'm drinking a pint of Vimto. Nice. Are you drinking it neat or have you watered it down? Watered it down. It's, it's, yeah. Have you tried it neat in the past? Once a long time ago. And it took me about three days to come down from the sugar <laughs> height. Start to see through time. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. It's a proper taste from the past, Vimto, isn't it? It is delicious. One of the strongest, like, kids' drinks I've ever tasted. But it's so nice. Mm. It's up there with, like, old-style Ribena from when you were a kid, and Ribena, like, actually turned your teeth black. <laughs> it was... It's when they still put sugar in it, and that weird purple colouring that was not natural in any way. Mm. Awful. What colour is that? I don't know. can't pronounce it because it's just a series of numbers. Oh, that's the good shit. <laughs> Thinking which, is, is tartrazine a controlled like food substance now? Because remember that was linked to kids being hyperactive and all sorts. Because I just basically I drank nothing but orange squash as a kid. I think I went through gallons of the stuff. <laughs> did you know? Yeah, can, I do now actually. They actually put tartrazine in it from that thing we've been watching on YouTube. They have to put a warning label on it about hyperactivity. Oh wow, Jesus! It's in a lot of American foods. Good old US of A and their lovely food. I need to get me some more like US snacks, just to see just how much oh. sugar's in there. Oh no. So, um, a friend of mine brought back some uh, Hershey's from a visit to the States, and they were absolutely vile. I have no idea how Americans eat it. If we have any US listeners who want to send a care package of Hershey's to the UK, please DM me for my address. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Mike, and I'm drinking a cup of very boring tea. It's a cup of herbal calm tea from Twinings. Uh, it's slightly cinnamony, vanillary, um, and chamomile And um, yes. Very, very nice and much needed. Oh, someone's going to Betty Bays tonight. Mm, oh, God, I hope so. <laughs> oh, that would be lovely. If you, Bed and sleep, you say. Amazing. If you tap out mid-puzzle, then we'll just leave you. It's fine. You've earned it. <laughs> Before we get started, I want to give a huge thank you to our Patreons for supporting this podcast. You are really are the best. And this week, I want to give a shout out to three very special Patreons indeed. Laura Guerin, please tell me how to pronounce that properly. I don't want to butcher it in future podcasts. Thank you, Laura. Lily and Colin Walker. Thank you all so much for keeping us off the streets and on the air. You are the wind beneath my wings, the sugar in my coffee. Sugar, sugar in your vimto. Sugar in your vimto. <laughs> the cheese on my meatballs. I don't know where I'm going with this, but anyways, thank you. Surely rarebit. Well, the rarebit's more of a re- requirement. Cheese not in a rarebit is just toast. Whereas I'm talking like that little something extra that makes my day that much better. Brief, possibly totally cuttable aside, but... What's the difference between rabbit and cheese on toast? Um, beer, I think, is one of the things. Beer and mustard. It's mustard, is it? You mix it in the cheese. Ah, yeah, Mel- melty cheese with beer and mustard. Great that it gets all congealed and then you slather it like a toast topper. And oh. it is bloody lovely. <laughs> oh, dear Americans, please send get, return to sending your care packages. <laughs> <laughs> Don't knock it until you tried it. God, the UN are going to start dropping rice in. <laughs> well, not rice in, but rice, comma. In. Okay, I thought you said, we'll, we'll check that on the top of the toast as well. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> Improve that. <laughs> so, you may be asking yourself, what is the Infinite Escape Room? Well, I, if you've been a fan of the podcast for a while, after nearly 200 episodes, I hope you know. But just in case, it's much like the escape rooms you're used to seeing out in the real world. But this one stretches across all known themes and dimensions. No scenario is too crazy, no intellectual property is too precious. You forget the Marvel multiverse, this year is the real shit. And because it's infinite, there is no end. Every room in the infinite escape room links seamlessly into the next, in one big, never-ending escape experience adventure. Each week, one of us will present a part of the infinite escape room, while the others try to solve it. If they don't escape within 30 minutes, then they'll lose, and not very nice things will happen to them. 
and if they break anything they're not supposed to, they will lose their deposit, which this week is all the buttons on every pair of trousers you own. That'll be... Oh! Disastrous. I would not moan, bemoan the loss of button flies in general. I think button flies were created by Satan himself because zips were just... Zips are Jesus and button flies are, are the devil. Correct. But you get those trousers that are both buttons and zips. And with the, Wait, what? With the button gone, the zip just under it does itself. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, you're quite right there. You're not wrong. You'll still hold it up with a belt or some such, but at what cost? Because you know that button's going to unravel everything soon. The bastard. Not even speaking from personal experience. It hasn't happened to me in the past day. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'll be ready. Yep. yep Then I sent her the infinite escape room. Last week, you were trapped on a runaway and slightly murderous Thomas the Tank Engine. After solving the mystery of who killed the fat controller, you defeated Thomas and vacated the train, only to be accosted by none other than disgraced former Prime Minister Theresa May. You run full pelt in the exact opposite direction of Theresa May as she robot dances towards you with alarming speed. You spy a line of trees up ahead and you make a final sprint towards the safety of the woods. As you burst through the tree line, the faint sounds of red, white and blue Brexit (laughs) immediately give way to a tranquil serenity. The bleak January coal is now a blissful warmth on your skin. The din of traffic replaced with babbling brooks and birds. And the air feels, smells and tastes pure. In the distance, you spy a rather depressed looking donkey and an anxious little piglet walking along a bridge. You must be in the Hundred Acre Wood, the stomping ground of beloved children's character Winnie the Pooh, and now in the public domain, so we can do whatever the hell we want with it. Ahead of you, you spy a notice board with a big welcome banner above it, but it's misspelled as most things in the Hundred Acre Wood often are, and this one is spelt W E L L C U M, unfortunately. As you head hmm. towards the sign, the ground beneath you starts to shake, and it's seemingly coming from everywhere at once. You hear an almighty ha ha in the unmistakable voice of Mickey Mouse. <laughs> it appears as though the Walt Disney Company have smelled a potential copyright infringement suit and are on their way to get their bloodied mitts on this little slice of paradise. Using your in-depth knowledge of sound dynamics, you reckon you've got about 30 minutes to get out before the House of Mouse turns the Hundred Acre Wood into a sweatshop and sues this podcast into oblivion. Oh no, you don't mess with the mouse, as they say. Your time starts now. When you approach the notice board... You see a map of the Hundred Acre Wood. Most of the locations are marked with a big big X and the words under construction are written over it. The ones that are seemingly open are Pooh Bear's House, Eeyore's Gloomy Place, Christopher Robin's House and the Bee Tree. Where would you like to go? Hmm. So that was Pooh's House. Yeah, Pooh's House, Christopher Robin's House, Eeyore's Gloomy Place and the Bee Tree. Hello? Uh, let's go see, go see Pooh's house. You certainly can. So Winnie the Pooh's house is, is a charming little hovel built into a hollow tree trunk. There's a small round window, a doormat with the word welcome, again, really badly misspelled on it, and a door that's locked with a five-letter word lock. This lock is bloody huge, and every wheel has every single letter of the alphabet on it. The lock is currently set to the letters I R P N X. Winnie the Pooh does not appear to be home. You said that welcome was hilariously misspelled. How is it misspelled here? The same way as on the uh, the welcome sign. Welcome. Oh, come. Uh, C-U-M or C-O-M? C-U-M. Welcome. Oh, dear. This is not the Disney version. <laughs> Crikey. Hmm. So is it a, f- a five-letter word lock? That is correct. Just because it's Winnie the Pooh, could we put honey in the five-letter? Lock. Yeah, you put the word honey in the word lock and nothing happens. I I had a sneaking suspicion Laura might just insta do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth a try, oh, it's poo. There's that moment of panic in Jamie's eyes. Oh no, not Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Not Dom's infinite puzzle all over again. <laughs> I said I was sorry. <laughs> that was genius though. <laughs> hmm. Okay, um, should we go and look at some of the other places? Go back and look at some of the other places? Yeah. Uh, actually, no. Oh, can we take a peep through the round window, actually? Uh, yeah, you have a little look through the, the round window. Um, it's kind of frosted over, so you can't see a great deal. Um, it just looks like the inside of Pooh's house. You can see like the faint outline of a bed and a mirror. Okay. Where to next, Law? Uh, let's try Eeyore's gloomy place. Certainly. 
So you reach uh, Eo's gloomy place, and it is, his home is as miserable as Eo himself. It's basically a patch of bare earth with a precarious wooden lean-to. Uh, there's a couple of pairs of discarded arm-length latex gloves nearby as well. Won't go into that. Uh, Eo himself is slumped down on the ground in front of the lean-to, looking gloomy as usual. Um, he's trying to get up, but he seems to be weighted down by a huge branch that's been nailed to his ass. Oh, Jesus. Can we approach Eo? And be like, hey, Eeyore, how's it going? Yeah, um, Eeyore just looks up at you glumly and says, Nobody mind me. Nobody ever does. I'm just waiting for Pooh to come back with my tail. He sure has been gone a while. Maybe that message he left in the sand is what he was trying to tell me. Probably decided to leave me. Everybody does. It's a shame I can read. And as you look to the... Uh the direction that EO is looking. Um, it does look that Pooh has scrawled some kind of message in the sand in a hurry and his footprints hastily lead off away from EO's gloomy place. And I will pop that message into the chat for you right now when I can find the bloody thing. There you go. If one of you could describe what you are seeing, that would be lovely. Okay, so it's five empty boxes as it stands, but the first box has one arrow pointing up above it. Second has three arrows pointing down below it. Third, two arrows above it. Fourth, one below and above. And fifth, one below. Oh, so is this having to change? Ah, okay, I get it. Oh, you do? Explain. Uh, is is it going back to the five-letter lock and moving the things in that in those directions? So, because it was currently an I, R, P, N, X. So moving I up one. Oh, down three. Like, like that. So I've got to work that out now, though. So I, now that I've said that. But <laughs> could we just do that? <laughs> uh, you do. Um, as you spin the, the letters, you notice that the, the letters are in alphabetical order. Um, there's no strange, weird gubbins to it. So as you spin the I up one, um, or you yeah, spin it up one, you see that the letter is now H. Oh, not J. No, because you move the thing up, don't you? Yes, yeah, so it's gone back a letter. Oh, I see, oh. yes. Oh, so going up decrements it. Gotcha. So going, spinning up decrements and spinning down increments. So the second letter, if we spin it, would be U. Oh, okay. Oh, H-U-N-N. It's honey. It's going to be honey, H-U-N-N. I forgot he spells it badly. Because <laughs> oh, who spells things badly? Can we can we switch? Can we twiddle the the, uh, the letters around, please? To be H U double N Y. You do. Uh, you spin the dials on the word lock to spell out the word honey, spelled H U N N Y. Because as we all know, Pooh, being a bear of very little brain, can't spell for shit. And the lock <laughs> pops open. <laughs> you are now free to enter Pooh's house if you wish. Yes, please. Yeah, what's in Pooh's gaff? Uh, so you walk in. You walk inside. Um, Pooh Bear's house is pretty sparsely decorated. Uh, there's a bed. There's a mirror. There's some honey jars in the cabinets. Um, there's a coat stand near the mirror with two sort of wide brim hats with mesh visors over the top of them. There's also a series of um, identical red T-shirts um, on hooks, but Pooh can't wear them in this particular puzzle because that look is owned by Disney. And if he wears that T-shirt, then we're going to get shut down. So don't don't touch those. And uh, you can sort of smell just the sickly sweet smell of honey saturated in everything. The, the mirror, the cabinets, uh, the, the bed, just covered in honey. I'm sorry, Jimmy, can we get that list of things again? Uh, yeah. So you've got um, uh, a mirror, some honey jars in the cabinets, um, Winnie the Pooh's bed. Then there's the coat stand with two wide brim hats with like a mesh visor over the top and those red T-shirts. Uh, honey jars, are they full or empty? All the honey jars are empty. They have been licked clean. Weirdly, it's the only thing that doesn't have honey on it because Pooh's gone to town enough. <laughs> and a bit of a honey bender. <laughs> Sounds lovely. I wonder... I'm seeing a mesh hat. I'm wondering, and some long gloves actually, where Eeyore was. I wonder if we might need to do a bit of beekeeping. I wonder if we might need to go and retrieve some honey. That's what I was thinking. In a um, safe way. Before we do the bee, the bee, tree, bee tree, keep writing that down wrong, should we do Christopher Robin's house then just to see if there's anything useful there first? Um, yeah, I was just thinking, is there anything else that we want to look at while we're in here? Um, can we just have rifle through 
Pooh's bed. Uh, yeah. So you, you look at that. You peel back the bed sheets, and you immediately notice oh. that they are incredibly sticky. Um, it seems Ooh. as though Pooh Bear does like to have breakfast in bed because the whole thing is covered in honey residue. Um, but yeah. under the sheets, uh, you do spot um, like a, like a honey soaked strip of grey cloth with a drawing pin through one end and a pink bow on the other. And the ends of the cloth near the bow, they're all sort of frayed. That gives it that rather sort of bushy appearance. Eeyore's tail. Uh, yeah. Let's grab it. You have a, a honey-soaked Eeyore's tail. Uh, let's uh, maybe take it back to um, Eeyore's sad place. <laughs> Garth Eeyore's sad place. <laughs> Certainly. So you uh, you unpin the branch from Eeyore's arse and he gives an appreciative wiggle. Um, before you put the tail on the donkey, muscle memory from childhood birthday parties kicks in and you can't help but close your eyes and turn around three times before planting the tail firmly in Eeyore's badonkadonk. Uh, he yelps a little, but he does seem grateful. And he says, Thanks a bunch. Now the only thing weighing me down is my own depression and existential dread. You can keep the branch if you want. I got no use for it now. And he goes into his lean-to and lies down all grumpily. You and me both here. <laughs> you and me both. Do you want to go secrets for Robin's house? Or do you want to do the, the, the bee tree? I would like to go to Christopher Robin's house, I think. Sure. So as befits the Lord of the Realm, Christopher Robin's house is both bigger and higher up than the rest of the Hundred Acre Wood. As you approach the house, you can see that nobody's lived there for some time. Uh, the place is looking pretty dilapidated, but the door itself seems pretty solid. Uh, the word condemned, spelt with a K, is cr- scrawled all over the door. And there are two crumpled boiler suits left on the doorstep. The door itself um, appears to be locked, and there's a large brass keyhole in the centre. Oh, boiler suits, we might need them. Yeah, we should probably grab those. Yeah. Cool, you have some boiler suits. Oh, and I suppose run back, because we didn't actually grab the hats from Pooh's either, so can no, we run so back to Pooh's place and grab the, the hats? And the gloves from Eeyore. You leg it back to Pooh's, yeah. grab the hats, leg it back to Eeyore's and grab the gloves. Shall we go look at the bee tree? Let's. Uh, so the bee tree is a large oak tree that stretches several metres up. There are a few pairs of heavy-duty boots at the base of the tree. And about halfway up, you can see a beehive hanging from a large branch. And dangling down from the branch with his head stuck in the beehive is a rather bewildered and very naked Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> Just sort of swinging slightly. Oh, bother. I mean, he's, he's quite naked most of the time. Yeah, but I'm just thinking. He doesn't like, get his T-shirt on this time. He's fully naked. I think it would be. I think it's weirder with the T-shirt on. Because <laughs> yeah, then he is naked, isn't it? He's half naked. Without yeah. a T-shirt, he's just a teddy bear. With a T-shirt on, he's a half naked. It, Im- it implies it's like Donald that, Duck. Yeah, it implies that he has some shame, but not the right kind. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like, oh, I wouldn't want you to see my nips, but my massive flapping <laughs> bear genitalia. <laughs> Feast on these. Hey, so he's a bit like a Ken doll. It's all smooth. <laughs> <laughs> he's only got stubby little legs. He'd be dragging on the floor otherwise. <laughs> Should we don our outfits before we do anything? Because there was boots Let's. there as well. So we need the boots, the boiler suits, the gloves, and the netty hats. Yep, so you are now fully kitted out and look like a bunch of retired fences on a day trip to the south of France. It's the best thing to look like. <laughs> we look like on every holiday. <laughs> um, okay, can we get our massive branch and I guess give Pooh a prod with it? Uh, you certainly can. Um, as you were... Uh, Don your, your bee suit, you hear Pooh's muffled voice. Um, he's, he's sensed you come come up to you and just says, Oh, bother. I was helping you all fix his tail when my tummy started growling and a bear needs his honey. So I climbed up here to grab some from the bees. But now my head is stuck inside and the little fuckers are stinging my face. There's something clanging around in here with me, but it doesn't taste like honey. Can you help? And then you hit the, the bear, the beehive with the branch with an almighty thwack and the branch uh, formerly known as eo's tail falls to the floor um you pick it up try again it takes a couple of swings but you eventually knock the hive loose and like a piñata it bursts open angry bees start flying in every direction as poo hits the ground but luckily he's made of fluff so we're all we're okay with that the bees start to fly towards you but seeing that you're completely shielded from their stings they turn their anger towards winnie the poo Pooh Bear takes off towards the river shouting, Oh, Bava! as he gets stung again and again and again. Inside the broken beehive, you spy a large brass key clotted with honey. You have found the beekeeper. <laughs> oh, that's very good. Also, can we take a moment? <laughs> Listeners might not realise that 
this this wasn't somebody that Jamie found on Fiverr. Jamie just did the most incredible Winnie the Pooh impression, and Laura and I were on webcam, both just like, what? <laughs> Where's he been hiding? <laughs> I'm going to get sued, aren't I? <laughs> That's amazing. That was so good. As soon as I found out Winnie the Pooh was in the public domain, I go, oh, yes, I finally got a reason to use the voice. <laughs> <laughs> There's been some amazing stuff from Winnie the Pooh being in the public domain on Twitter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, we need the can, can, can you do some song lyrics for us or something? <laughs> we Forget about Dre? Nowadays, everybody wants to talk like they've got something to say. But nothing comes out when they move their lips. It's just a bunch of gibberish. And the motherfuckers act like they've forgotten about Dre. But they've not forgotten about the honey. <laughs> Amazing! <laughs> well, that's my, my I do children's birthday parties, bar mitzvahs. It works. <laughs> So it's good. genuinely the best thing that's happened to me all day. Like, that's amazing. <laughs> oh no, second best thing. Laura gave me a really good calzone. Oh yes, yes, um, I can't, I can't match that. Don't suppose you only rise against lyrics. Oh, do you? I don't. <laughs> but oh, I, I'll, I'll find some just for you. <laughs> Yay! Yeah, if you could, if you could do Winnie the Pooh swing life away from me, just me, a little private recording. That'd be amazing. That's for the top tier patreons. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> Laura, shall we? Um, should we take, take this, this key? Uh, yeah. And, uh, and go to Christopher Robin's condemned house. Certainly. So you take the beekeeper and you shove it into the brass keyhole in Christopher Robin's house. The door immediately swings inward and you tumble in. As you keep tumbling, you appear to have triggered um, some sort of trap mechanism and the front panel of the wall slides down to reveal two levers. One is coloured red. One is coloured blue. There's a bit of text carved into the, into the wood above the levers that says, one takes you to the next room. One will take you to your doom. Are these spelt right? These are spelt in perfect English. How do we choose? Is there anything else in there? Um, the rest of the house seems to be pretty dilapidated. Um, just cobwebs and broken down furniture. Christopher Robin either, either died or grew up or left a long time ago. These poor animals have been fending for themselves for a while. Not sure where Winnie the Pooh's got his potty mouth from. Just trying to think of what we've seen so far. <gasps> Didn't Theresa May shout something about red, white, and red, blue, white, and blue, blue. Brexit? <sighs> what was it she shouted again? Uh, I believe as she chased you into the woods, she just shouted red, white, and blue Brexit. As Theresa May is, is wont to do. Hmm. We've seen Pooh's red t-shirts back at his his place, but have we seen anything blue? Yeah, we couldn't wear the red t-shirts for copyright reasons. Um. Hmm. Oh, this is sneaky, Jamie. I like this. <laughs> Has Jamie given us any... So we had the misspelled words earlier. Uh, we had condemned with a K. We had honey. Um, hmm. hmm. We had welcome. Yeah, I haven't written down colours anywhere else other than his red shirts, but we didn't do anything with those. Um, if we were to go for just the general UX approach, we could say that red is usually bad. <laughs> um, there is that. But then he did specifically tell us about the red shirts. Red shirt. Red shirts are sacrificial lambs in Star Trek. Could be. Any thoughts, Laurie? I'm, I'm literally just blathering now. I know, but you know, there's more thoughts than I'm having. <laughs> <laughs> uh... I'm okay, so the message again was, Jamie? Uh, yes, yeah, so I've written above the, the two levers with the words, one takes you to the next room, one will take you to your doom. No clues in there. Hmm, and no clue in the uh, the message in the sand earlier either. No, that was just to get honey. Should we just pull a lever? Should we just pick one? Yeah. Should we pull the blue one? That's what we've been circling around. Yeah, let's pull the blue what's one. Your, uh, what's your reasoning behind it? There isn't a lot of reason. Just you one. Our, our car's blue. Our um, car's blue. Yeah. Our last cars are blue as well. Yeah, we've had a lot of blue cars. I think that's I think that's a pretty good reason. Okay. So you hesitantly put your hand on the blue lever and pull. There's a click, and for a few seconds, nothing happens. Then, suddenly below you, a trap door swings open. Oh no! You hover mid for a few seconds, long enough to make comical looks at each other. Then at the floor, then at each other again. One of you like, resists the urge to hold up a little sign saying, whoops, before you slide down into a water slide and into the unknown. 
And with 10 minutes left, you have solved my puzzle. Congratulations. You chose correctly. Hey. You chose rightly. Oh, we chose right. Oh, thank God. Yeah. We chose wrong. I thought that was a trap towards us. <laughs> no, no, it was a horse slide. It was fun. The wrong, the wrong one would have uh, summoned Mickey and his pals. Okay, we definitely missed something there, though. How did we? Where's Where's the the levers? It was the. Yeah. Um, how do we How do we join that? It was up? the the red was the was the forbidden color. You weren't allowed to touch the red. Ah, which that, is... that would poo. If you handled that, Mickey would have come come in. Um, I was kind of hoping that you'd. Um, call my bluff and try and grab the the red t-shirt so i could do a bit more threatening with the mickey mickey cackle <laughs> uh, <laughs> gotcha. in, but you got you got the honey thing really quickly um luckily you didn't go for the misspelled version like like winnie the pooh does otherwise you would have solved it in like five minutes <laughs> like she's <laughs> done it again no, i completely forgot that he misspells honey and you picked up on the beekeeper outfit really quickly as well i thought by scattering it around the the map that it might have taken a little bit longer but you guys are on fire so we're sober for a change. That's the problem. We're on a, 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 oh yeah, no, damn it. <laughs> we've had no booze week. We're on no booze fortnight. God. And then in two weeks, I'll be sitting by the fridge just staring longly at the wine rack. It's uh, it's too much booze at the bottom of the stairs. You guys absolutely smashed it. Hey. Oh, it was a really nice puzzle. Your your voice work, Jamie, was absolutely astounding. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm I'm trying to like not make like like going back and listen to like previous episodes of previous puzzles that I've done. Trying to make them a little less soul crushing and like tough and like to, to the wire and <laughs> so i'm trying to ease back on that a little bit <laughs> oh it's because we're idiots yeah because i've done two other ones with you thank you with you recently i think and it's uh me and ben made it out just barely yeah. like seconds to spare and then the other one we failed <laughs> yes so i'm trying to like i'm trying to fight strike the happy medium of success but not at like the cost of your sanity <laughs> <laughs> I thank you very much. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jamie. Um, that was a real belt. Thank you. I I did have a, a bad ending. If you'd like to hear it, yeah. Um, so if you ran out of time, um, or if you'd pulled the wrong lever, um, it would have gone. <clears throat> There's a sudden deafening boom as all the trees around the Hundred Acre Wood implode, creating a shockwave that flattens every home in the tranquil little woodland. As the smoke clears, you see a seven-foot muscle-clad marine dressed in an ill-fitting Mickey Mouse costume stood next to a panzer tank. The hatch on the tank opens to reveal the cryogenically frozen head of Walt Disney himself. He cackles to himself and says, in Mickey's voice, Oh boy! Time to build a new Disney World, huh? <laughs> I'm not sure what Ben would have done with that afterwards, but bye-bye. <laughs> oh, man, I, I wish we'd pulled the other opening. Like, oh, I wish Ben had started with that, because listening to Ben try and do that as the opening as well would be amazing. <laughs> we'll just recut it. Just, just say the word blue and I'll insert it back into the, you know, in the edit. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, that was wonderful. <laughs> oh, Ben's thick Melksham accent trying to uh, work its way out back into the mouse would have been. Oh, no, that was wonderful. That was really excellent. I like that. Thank you. Um, good, good, bad ending, Jamie. Thank you very much. That's the second time someone said they preferred my bad ending. Maybe I need to switch them up. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Thanks very much for listening. You can subscribe to us on all your podcast or streaming services of choice, as well as our website at www.theinfiniteescaperoom.com. If you're super cool and done with the social medias, you can also follow us and get in touch via Facebook and Twitter at Tia underscore podcast. If you enjoyed the episode, and we really hope you did, we'd be very grateful if you could leave us a review on iTunes or Facebook. It really is a massive help in getting more people to find us. But Jamie, I hear you cry. I want to do more than that. How do I join the inner circle? Well, dear listener, if you're feeling saucy and you want to throw us a few coppers, then why not join our Patreon? Head on over to patreon.com slash the infinite escape room, where you can listen to episodes a week early, get a shout out on the show, listen to our unedited episodes filled with swears, mistakes and burps, and if you're really lucky, I'll climb to the top of Penavan, the tallest mountain in South Wales. And as I reach the peak, I'll cut my hands over my mouth and bellow your name into the wind. And that wind, borne by the power of your name, will carry down into the valleys below, whistling through the towns and whispering through the quiet villages. And as the people of the valleys tuck themselves into bed, their final thoughts before the yawning of midnight consumes them will be of you. Under milk wood can eat it. <laughs> <laughs> or I could just record a five-second clip of saying some... A horrid thing in Winnie the Pooh's voice. Maybe, maybe <laughs> that'll be. I'll get the Patreons coming in. <laughs> <laughs> That's got to be a bonus episode that we record now. Is us giving Winnie the Pooh terrible things to say. <laughs> I'm, I'm done with it. Oh, I'm done no. with it. <laughs> Come on, Lord. Just just ten minutes after this recording. Just ten minutes. Of us giving Jamie awful Different things, things to say. I, Winnie the Pooh. I'm 100 percent behind that. <laughs> we love you lots, and we'll see you next time on the Infinite Escape Room. Bye bye. 
Bye. Bye-bye.